Alô, Romano Alô, Romano They want some change to happen. So I just thought that I should also be a part of that, try my best to be a part of it. Um, about 25 years ago, I was asked by Antipua and Uncle Ed. Um, I, I was taking classes from Devon University, 
and I um, was going to go on a trip to London. I had an opportunity to go to London. So I had to ask them if I could leave, take off for about 10 days from their class to go on this vacation. I was embarrassed to ask. Um, they said I could, but they told me, when you go, we want you to do this um, kuleana. And it was to go to the British Museum of Natural History and get an inventory in England of all the Hawaiians who are there, who were taken to England. When they asked me to do that, I honestly, I started to cry. I looked around like, are you talking to me? And um, anyway, I did it. And I was able to figure it out, and I was able to step up, use, um, deal from my strength, and I did it. And 25 years later, um, it's more than 200 of our kupuna who are back home here. And that reminds me all the time that even if you feel like you're not qualified or you're intimidated or um, you're unsure of yourself, that you need to push forward anyway. Because everything takes time and that took 25 years and this may take at least 25 years as well. So, mahalo mm -hmm. this and 
and Mahalo for you being here. E ala na moku o ke kai lo loa, e moe lo ane ma kai o ka po. Aloha aina. Wake up. Our islands are ebbing away. While you sleep, we are at the edge of darkness. Love the land. Ano ai ke aloha, my name is Moani Keala Akaka. 45 years ago, a handful of us started the Hawaiian Movement for Justice in Kalama Valley on Oahu. I've been on the front lines these past 45 years, including as a trustee for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs for 12 of those years, to protect our aina and for our people to get as much as they can get, for they deserve much for the theft of our Hawaiian nation. 1978, we closed down the Hilo Airport runway because we were the landlords come to collect the rent. This was for the Hilo, Waimea, and Molokai airports. As a result of our being arrested, and the National Guard was called, just like they threatened to call the National Guard on us on Mauna Kea, Mauna Avakea. You can imagine what it was like. My three-year-old daughter was with us. We kept the kids way behind. A couple of little blonde kids were with us. Their ancestor was Lauren P. Thurston. Their mother was there to stand with us to, to get the rent that we rightfully deserve for these airport runways. After we were at the airport and were arrested there, I saw these pictures of the National Guard with rifles raised. I'm glad I didn't see that picture until after it was all over. As a result of us closing down the Hilo Airport runway, Judge Kimura, bless his heart, said not only were those airports illegally seized, but past governors since the 30s had confiscated Hawaiian homestead land, and as a result, over $600 million at $30 million a year started coming in to DHHL. That money ended this past June. We should not have to risk our lives to get the justice our people deserve. And that is one of the reasons why this Na'iaupuni is so important, and it is important that we get as much independence as possible as a part of it. Because what we have now hasn't worked. For us to have the National Guard called up to, uh, against us at Mauna Kea, and I was one of the first to be arrested there. Of the, and the, of the first 11 that were arrested, the average age was, was uh, 53. And believe me, I'm very, very proud of these young ones who have stepped forward in the Mauna Kea issue. But there are many issues, and it is important that we have people, we only have seven delegates, and to be honest with you, I'm a little disturbed that the seven delegates from out of state can neutralize the seven delegates from this island, while Oahu has 20 delegates. You know, most of my family lives on the mainland. But they, those, living, those of our people living on the mainland have no understanding or comprehension of what we go through on a day-to-day -day basis and what our problems are here. Our families come home whenever they can afford to, see their ohana, eat as much fish and poi as they can, and then they go back to wherever they came from, Cucamonga, Iowa, or Southern California, or wherever it may be. They're struggling to survive in those lands that they live in, so they have no comprehension as to what's happening here. You know, the fact that uh, a minority of our population, those 50%, can outnumber and can disqualify all the rest of us, the majority of our population, what do you call that if not undemocratic? We should never allow that to happen. So I'm saying we need people in there that are really going to kokua our people in our aina. Not the ones that are for the same old, same old, so they can keep collecting the grants that they're getting. So the few can uh, have the advantages while the many of our people suffer. I'm saying enough is enough. We need people in there that are really going to kokua our aina and our people. For real. Not ones that are BSing. So I say, please consider me as one of the seven delegates from our island. We snooze, we lose. I much Aloha Walter. 
I'm a founding member of the Protect Kahol Lobby Ohana. But you know, if we don't have people in there trying to make a difference, then it's going to be the same old, same old smell that's been going on since, uh, since the early 70s. Mahalo <laughs> Muelo. I've come to understand as a Hawaiian, I celebrate my emotions just as you've seen many of us who cry, get angry, and be passionate when it comes to our people, our land, and our history. As an American, I've learned it can be used against me. So I humbly say to you in the four minutes I have been allocated for you to get to know me, I am Judy Mapuana Moa. I am a Hawaiian and I'm 54 years old. I'm on the waiting list for Hawaiian homelands <coughs> along with my five brothers and sisters who I've extended my application documents to. I was born and raised in Seattle, Washington, where my 100% Hawaiian father moved at 26 years old to make a better life for himself rather than running the streets of Honolulu in the 1950s. He was born in Kauai where his mother's family migrated from Niihau and his father from the Big Island on the Kona side. My father had eight children, of which six survived or are living today. We all have English first names and the Hawaiian middle names, and when I asked my father about this, he told me we were not allowed to have Hawaiian first names. And being the quiet Hawaiian who spoke with his eyes, I never pushed him further. I've been a resident of the Big Island for the past 21 years after my father sent me here to pave the way for his return to Hawaii after he fell and had an accident and became a quadriplegic at 57 years old and divorced from my mother of 31 years. His heart was broken and all he wanted till the day he died was to return home to Hawaii. He never made it. With me, I brought my two daughters who I raised in Kona who have graduated from Kealakea High School and are outstanding people in our community. I'm very proud of my two quarter Hawaiian daughters. In 1996, I believed I found a Hawaiian man with enough cocoa to give me a son Qualify my Hawaii, who could qualify for Hawaiian homelands in an effort to perpetuate our diminishing numbers. And in 1998, I drove myself to Kona Community Hospital and delivered a seven pound, six ounce little boy who's 17 years old today. I was able to get my son into Kamehameha Preschool for two years and every summer during the summer programs, but he was never accepted to Kamehameha Schools, something that still pains me today. I tried desperately to find jobs to support us and struggle to make ends meet here in Hawaii, but I found, I still found time to play sports, and joined Kaihitu, learning to paddle for the first time. I played soccer and softball, and I joined the Kahumano Society in Aulike. I was a coordinator for Napu no Heao, who put on programs for the West Side for gifted and talented Native Hawaiian children. And in, in 2001, I graduated from the University of Hawaii with a bachelor's degree in business administration thinking I could use my experience in the insurance industry to support my family since I began in high school when I was given a job for salary and school credit at a brokerage firm in downtown Seattle, and my long-standing relationship with FEMA, where I hold all certifications for catastrophic claims adjusting that has taken me throughout the continental U.S., American Samoa, and Guam. I've worked storms like Charlie, Ivan, Katrina, Jean, Wilma, and the last event, Sandy which annihilated 900 shores of the east coast of the United States. And more recently, I worked the claims that totaled three residential properties in Pahoa and damaged many properties after his cell made landfall on the island in 2014, August 2014. I'm trained to see misfortune and help people get through it. I have been vice president and finance chair for my homeowners association in Kau, a board member for Kuikani Mediation Center in Hilo, I am Vice President of the Board of Directors for the Big Island Federal Credit Union. Today, I own and operate an insurance agency. I have two employees in Kona and an office in Hilo, where we sell personal and commercial insurance policies, educating our customers on risk and exposure. We strive to help people not sell something that, our, that ourselves would not buy under the same circumstances. This is my life, understanding coverage and risk, and why I'm involved in the Nightingale Puni process. Thank you. Aloha, my name is Kahio Mani I'm going to stand over here because yes. I don't know a lot of 
everybody that's over here either. Thank you. I come from Hilo, born and raised. My grandmother was from Kilkaha. Uh, well, she wasn't from Kilkaha, she was from Kabul. Lydia Napoleon. We were the last family living in Kawa in 1957. She moved with her first husband to Kilkaha, and they were the first group of 17 women to be given property there. After living in Kilkaha, she gave that house back and moved to Panaeva because it was closer for her. So I still have family that lives on Pilipa Street. I um, was born and raised here, attended Kaumana Elementary School, and then I was privileged enough to attend Kamehameha in the seventh grade and graduated in 1980. I left the island to attend college and went to Cornell in Iowa where I studied political science. All of a sudden, after my junior year, I got itchy for a husband and children. So I proposed to my high school boyfriend, and he said yes, magically. So I flew home from Iowa, he flew home from Washington, and I became a Navy wife and a mother all within nine months. Um, I traveled the United States as a Navy wife for many years. And after a, a very friendly divorce, I came home in 1995 with two of my two children. Both of them are grown. One is living in Kona and uh, working a full-time job, amen. And my daughter is living in Utah where she also works full-time. I have a Mo'opuna who is in Maine and I rarely get to see her, but we Facebook and we talk story on the phone. Um, I came home to Hilo after 15 years in Kona. I lived, when I first came home in 95, I stayed here in Hilo. It was a little bit too close. I would drop my children off at school and my father would come behind me about 15 minutes and pick them up and take them golfing. And so after about four months of going to the school and not finding my children there, I decided I better move to Kona. So I transferred with First Hawaiian Bank and went to Kona. Um, I stayed in Kona for 15 years and worked a variety of different jobs as a single parent. And we worked for the union, worked for the hotel business for many years, uh, ran a soil company, dispatched for a trucking company, worked at First Hawaiian Bank, um, learned to dance hula after many, many years. Have not had the privilege of learning our language, which is something I want to do, but I'm not too sure I have the memory for it anymore. My parents were very involved. My father ran for OHA when they weren't paying OHA people. My mother ran for mayor when she thought everything was going to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> um, I come from a line of, of people who love this island, love the Hawaiian culture, and thought that if we have any breath left in us, we should get up and do something. And so now, after a few years, after taking care of my parents, and they've both passed, fixing up a very old house, I have time on my hands, and I felt that this was something I needed to do. Not because I had a very strong stand on the sovereignty issue, or I had a very strong stand on the federal recognition issue. It was because I feel that we need to come together and form some kind of consensus that a majority of us will be proud to vote for. And so that's why I decided to put my name in. I decided that instead of, and I'm learning, it's, I've, I've learned so much about both sides of the issue. And so although I don't have a specific feeling on both sides, what I do know is there's some very good stuff coming out of both ends. And I'd like to find a way that when we get together as delegates, we can find something meaningful, something that will help us to keep control of our lands and of our people, and that will help us in the future. And so that's why I decided to be a part of this and put my name in. Mm -hmm. Mahalo, and thank you, Ian, for bringing this together. Great.
even those of you who are on TV, not on the live video. I will I'll tell you who I am first. Uh, a lot of my friends call me, uh, especially the younger, Uncle Koo. And yes, I am Uncle Koo. I'm also Uncle Koo King. But my, my registered name on the ballot is Clarence Fook Tam King. They got the fucking name. Anyway, starting out, let me tell you that you all don't look like sheep. And why do I say that? I'm, I'm standing here before you today, and I'm objecting to the situation that we, are all been, we have all been placed in. And what I'm talking about, and you know, some of you know, because I saw it in your faces earlier on, this whole thing is a setup. And they brought you here to start off by indoctrinating you. We are not CNHA. We are not American. The Department of Interior has no business here. And yet, the early part of the program was talking about all you guys being American. I want to let you know that I am not American. I am pro-independence. I am pro-kingdom. I am pro-legal economy. I am pro those signers of the Kuhi petition. And by the way, let me also tell you, uh, I, I don't know if this happened because I wasn't in the room at the time. Did the lady up here talking to you guys, did she disclose who she was? That she's the president of CNHA and she is also a candidate to be delegate from Oahu? And so these guys have infiltrated the whole process. They're making plans on how they're going to make you guys all Americans and all subservient to the government of the United States. I don't know what to tell you other than to sort of, you know, explain a little bit between the lines. Have you think about things, watch to see what the process looks like. All the process needs to be. Oh, by the way, um, I am very connected to this island. I've been, I've been here for over 20 years. Uh, one of my ancestors is Biloa. So you can see, you can, from that, say, okay, Biloa, oh, Abu Abba, Umi Ali Loa, his son, Kyabi Aumi, and his son, Lomui Kamakahiki. Uh, it just so happens that one Kamakahiki one time got mad at his wife. He either injured her very badly or he killed her, I'm not sure which, depending on which story you listen to. He got, he felt the bully, left Hawaii Island, went to Kauai, spent a couple of years running around the Kuhibi over there. And when he got his regular mind back, he came back and resumed his chief, chieftainship. But he left one of his sons or grandsons over in Kauai. And this person became my ancestor. And through this person, I am very much connected to this land. I'm genetically connected here. And uh, which means that I'm, you know, a lot of you are relatives of mine, one way or another, close to far, whether you're proud or not, I don't know. Uh, but please keep your eyes open. Vote those people that you can trust, that feel the same way you do, and you know. We're going to go there, hopefully those of you who take elected will go there and stick up for us because we on Hawaii Island are different than everybody else, you know. We're more independence minded, we're more traditional, there are a whole bunch of things that uh, you know, Hong Kong people are not. And I'm saying this, even though my kids always do Hong Kong Anyway, thank you for the opportunity to talk to you a little bit. Oh. Glasses on. I have an eye problem with eye drops, so I need to wear glasses. This is what I look like without it. My name is Lakey Hoy, and I'm coming closer to you because I have a problem projecting my voice. All right. So if I come into the audience, excuse me. I want to say mahalo to Ian Leloy and the Homestead Association 
for allowing this to happen today, bringing us all together. And I would also like to thank all the delegates here that stepped up to the plate. Because this is a very important election. Ever since the overthrow, this is a very important election. This is when we have to move forward as a people. I have been a constitutional lawyer for over 35 years. A constitutional lawyer, and I'm a serious lawyer, okay? I'm a very serious lawyer. I've fought for Native Hawaiian rights. My parents, Herbert Kihoi from Waimea. My mother, Sarah Punohu Davis from Honomalino, from the Davis line. I'm a seventh generation Kamehameha line. And I'm sure if we start talking enough, we're all related. So we are in this together, okay? All of us are in this together. I've been an advocate for Native Hawaiian rights as a legislative lawyer and a constitutional lawyer for many, many years, all right? Constitution is just structure and function of the government. That's all it is, it's not a big deal. We need to draft a constitution or a governance document that reflects the principles and values of our people. Now, if you go onto my Facebook, you look at the fact that I analyze different constitutions. The very first constitution was written basically by a reverend, which is great, Reverend Lyons. The 1887 Constitution, the Bayonet Constitution, was a constitution that took the rights away from all our Native Hawaiians. Did you know that our Hawaiian people could not vote because they didn't have land? Right? Did you know that? Because they didn't have an annual income. We do not need this in this constitution. I have fought, and I'm telling you this, I'm an orphan of the Queen Liliokalani Trust, and I told myself, I vowed to reestablish the Queen's Kingdom. And for 35 years, I fought for Hawaiians. I do not, I do not support any form of government at this time. I respect the independents, I respect the nationals, I respect federal recognition, all right? But I am going to the table with an open mind. We all should go to the table with an open mind. We need to come together as a people. I've been an appeals attorney for the past decision. That decision reaffirmed the rights, traditional rights, customary rights of Native Hawaiians. Very important decision for our people. I fought this state in 1998 because they refused to let me speak Hawaiian in the prisons. I'm a Ho'oponopono practitioner, and the Abbey Napiahi I worked under, Uncle Howard, <coughs> and to Malia Craver. And so what I said is, I need to go into the prisons, and I need to practice Ho'oponopono with what? My people. <coughs> they fired me. They fired me. And guess what? For three years, I saw a psychiatrist that said, you know what, you're crazy. I won the case, all right? Today, Hawaiians in prisons, our lahui, can speak Hawaiian and can practice their traditional customary rights. I'm an advocate for Native Hawaiian rights, all right? Uh, in the late 80s, I drafted legislation to preserve, preserve Mo'omomi so that we can have a fishing village. And my next step was to go to we don't need you to do the same. Every step of the way, I've had obstacles with this government. You know, three years, <clears throat> seeing the psychiatrist, they thought I was crazy. All right, so I'm not gonna go there. We need to have a nation for our Hawaiians and by our Hawaiians. Thank you very much. <laughs> Lenny Lilly, um, I am not a candidate. Um, I'm actually here for Fred Cachola, who wants to extend his aloha to all of you. He's actually traveling to Washington, D.C. right now um, to go and speak with the uh, historic preservation people in D.C. in order to look at uh, cultural landscapes and how we can get some significant areas um, in Hawaii deemed as cultural landscapes in order to preserve, in particular, uh, Mauna Kea. Um, he's also going to speak um, uh, at the Native, I think the Native American um, Museum 
uh, they'll be debuting the Pinky Thompson documentary. So he'll be going and doing the int introductory of that uh, documentary. So he wanted me to extend his aloha to both the people who had come as well as uh, the, the delegates. Um, and uh, back there is some information. Look at the website, any of the questions. Um, he took the questions and I guess they posted it up, his answers up on the website. So you can take a look at that. And mahalo for coming today. Mm -hmm. Aloha my couple. Um, that I wrote, but it's only because you know everybody brought up about Olelo. So this is something I wrote, it goes like this.
just to name. Everything had a meaning. But of course, they're not going to tell you everything because everything has a karma. And beyond the karma, you can go more hohonu and go more deep. But today, everybody, you know, that's like the papa, or oh, just the surface, you know, and not to hohonu. And I saw Ma'a being hohonu, you know. So, so every time when I start thinking, it's like, it's so deep that some people understand where I'm coming from. A lot of people don't because they're not embraced within the living of the culture. Yeah, so a lot of times, you know, for me, you know, people don't understand, or like, like I saw, and funny that I just call it Ulina, they are plastic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and plastic we don't need. Plastic we don't need. Okay, so, well, I'm not going to my time, I'm going to pull my time, I'm going to pull my time, I'm going to pull my time. I've been coming home, I know these meetings for about 40 years. I never saw one quiet like this and so kind of civilized. So, you know me. So, hi. I'm Clifford Capono. My name is Clifford Capono, but the answer is Tita is the kind. My name actually is Capono Kaawai. That means it's at the breath before the breath of wealth. So I get two resumes for you. I get the broader one. I'm a broader from the bushes. That's all simple, nothing fancy. And I get the Holly version of the resume. <laughs> Whatever you like to hear first. I choose the broader accent because that's what I identify. So 1978 crew Kulea, Olave, George Hamlin is my Wahana. Kalama Valley, I'm all of that. And uh, struggle with everybody else. My family came up, living at Hawaiian homes, had housing, if you would qualify for housing. Most of my family has something to do with the law. A lot of them are in the law. Most of us is out of the law. So, moving to the Holly side, I have uh, associates from Harvard to Halal Prison. I went to two undergraduates, two graduate schools, one postgraduate school. My background is in international finance and economics. I worked with the Russian Academy of Sciences and Transfer of Technology uh, when the Berlin Wall went down. So supposedly, I think I can read and write and I can understand what the Holly is talking about. Bounce back to the Kanasha side. On this Motu, I've been here 20 years, and my children all raised here. Some of the Kupuna was instrumental in me to be Ma'a, and to Eleanor Ona, and to Marley Akim Su, Paneva, Uncle Genesis Lee Loy. Uncle Genesis Lee Loy, Kalawui days, he was the Chief Justice. And I had the privilege to be his clerk. And, uh, Miss anybody? Abby, 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 Abby. These are the kupuna that bring magic, okay? They make magic. No more kupuna, yeah. Who kupuna? Stand up, I like to see. No more. No, 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 no. The kupuna, the kupuna I know, make these tables move in the air, move around, put them down. The kind of magic I'm talking about. So the manal comes from a very deep place. Not from the books and from the, what they would hear, or what they were learning in some school, the real deal. You grab everybody over here, put you in the middle of the ocean. Okay, how much money you got, what school you went to, how much degrees? You know how? If you know how, you go muck it. Yeah. Same thing you go to Kuwait Evi. Now think about this, every morning you wake up, in the Kuwait Evi, everything you need, all your food, all your lahao, all your building supplies, all there for free. Same in the whole time, everything. Come to Howley, you put them on a bag, a bottle, or a brochure, and you like sell them to you. And we like damn fools buying this stuff. How is that? How is that? So now, why are you writing this down in Ayapuni? They're talking about writing a constitution. Who here knows how to write a constitution? Really? Who knows about decolonization? And you should ask me that same thing. So, brother, what do you know about that? So, I'm going to tell you. On the Howley side, I had a job, Fortune 100 company. I was vice president for Motorola CNE South Pacific. When Micronesia decolonized, I was at the table for every one of those decolonizations. Republic of Palau, Federated States of Micronesia, and the Republic of the Marshall Islands. They had to negotiate with the Fed what they were going to get. They got screwed. That's why they're here. Absolutely. They didn't get a hospital in, in Marshalls. They come to the hospital here. They got no schools either. They elected, they call it my year They had every chance to take everything for themselves, and they did. And this is what the federal government did. They took every federal agency 
from the Fed, and then the Fed gave them the bill. Now in Marshalls, they were getting paid on the Compact and Free Association, how many millions it was getting. Richfield Petroleum came to them and said this, you know, you guys are gonna get all this money, you're gonna have cars, you're gonna have gas to drive the cars. Where you put the gas? We're gonna make the gas fuel station for you. So when they got paid off by the Fed, they took that money and they built the POL fuel station. But there was no money left over for them to buy cars. So they had gasoline, but no more cars. Now, if you don't really know what you're doing, and by the way, I don't respect everybody, I don't care how many chants you know. If you don't speak that Holly language, you don't mock what that thing thinks is legal. Here, federal recognition, you know what that means? You recognize what the Fed did, as if you'd have done it for yourself. We recognize America stole our government. We recognize America stole our land. That's the recognition. You got to mock that. Okay, well. that 
I should stand up for those rights. So I signed up for Kanai Olubalu, and I think everyone should. If you believe that you're Hawaiian and you're proud to be Hawaiian, sign up on that enrollment list. It's going to tell the world that you're Hawaiian. If you do not want to tell the world you are Hawaiian, then don't sign on the list and take your name off. But if you do want the world to know, and eventually everyone in Hawaii, then you belong on that list called Kanai Olubalu, which, hope, which is the purpose of it is to enroll all of us, to let the world know. Because if we're going to say that we're a sovereign people with a distinct population, we have to show that. We have a distinct population with a distinct land area. That's one of the things you learn when you study sovereignty. And I'm a sovereign citizen. So I'm here today, and that's why I'm here. I believe those things. I can tell you more later. I hope you all ask questions. I do, as Leia said, into this with an open mind and open to perspectives. We should all be ready to listen, as we learned from our kupuna, and learn, because our kupuna were always learning, and then make decisions. But I see this all as we're all on the same side. We want to work and advocate for our rights. My name is Kaipo. Um, I'm from Malaa. My parents live in uh, Waimea. And uh, my, my, my father is my uh, Punohu, and that's descendants from Kau, and my grandmother is Ahi, who is also uh, descendants in, uh, that originated in Milohi. Today I come to you with a different perspective, uh, maybe a little bit uh, different mix of my, what I can contribute to the AHA. Um, I'm going to step back. Growing up, Growing up, I was raised by two Native Hawaiian grandparents, uh, by two Native Hawaiian grandmothers, and I was really rooted in the cultural history of, of, of how we behaved as Hawaiians in, in our landscape. I, I learned how to fish, I learned how to hunt, I learned how to farm, and these are the things that I that was resonated with me as identified with Hawaiians. When I had my own children growing up on this big island, I found it challenging for these kids, for them to express their Hawaiianness in that context that I knew, and I knew it was time for change. I know it's time for me to rediscover myself and where I would go and what I would do to, to contribute to these changes. It's been a long road, a long process, and here's what, here's what I have. So, with these changes, I knew I, knew I would have to educate myself. And I was like any other Kolohe Hawaiian kid growing up. I got kicked out of the MBS schools. I had a hard time dealing with the institution, but here I am today, a proud Hawaiian, and one that believes in the struggles that we face. I'm in my PhD program right now, looking at our natural resource management, really from a Native Hawaiian perspective. Despite the institutional challenges, I understand this language like Kapono talks about, but I understand it in a way that's going to contextualize my future generations, our kids, that I'm tired of seeing no trespassing signs. I'm tired of going into a water that has no fish in it. I'm tired of the status quo, and I think it's time to change. Now, maybe these changes are not to be a recognized federal government at you know, federal recognition right now. But I do know that this constitution is important. And I'm going to tell you why I'm going to contribute and how my diversity is going to be essential in the mix of delegates. I, I, did, I got my education here starting at UH Hilo. Hawaii Community College really rooted me in my Hawaiian-ness and how it, what it meant in an institutional framework. I went to University of Hawaii at Hilo and they helped me to look at this science and not lose my Hawaiian values and how I came from the life experiences that I, that I went through to really connecting science, connecting institution with what was in my heart and how I would translate this and later make action on how we're going to protect the future of our children to be able to enjoy the benefits that I enjoyed. I'm proud of how I grew up. And there's no way that my children are ever going to get that opportunity unless we take charge of our natural resources. I left Hawaii to go to New York City to attend my master's degree in Columbia University. Now, Columbia University gave me a very unique perspective of, of, our, state, of our state status in an international context. I've traveled around the world, I've sailed around the world with people like Desmond Tutu, with uh, Kathleen Rogers. Now, that's bridging culture and technology, and the, what, what we, these things that we struggle with today, to, to holding on to a Hawaiian identity and putting it in a context that is relevant to today. Now, when I traveled around the world, I've, I've visited many indigenous cultures, some that had challenges, some that had, had triumphs. 
Now, these things that we can learn and share with each other, and I believe that with, with my experiences, will really level the playing field. I, don't come, I come from a political background, but I am nowhere a politician. But I believe in these, root, these rooted values that we need to preserve and have a, a, a document that is self-perpetuated for generations to come. And I believe it starts with a good mix of disciplines and candidates that can all contribute in a very diverse way because we live in a diverse society. Um, I'm not that eloquent of a, think, of, a, of a speaker. I'm a thinker. I learn the language. I'm a research, I'm, I'm a research um, specialist. And I apply these, these research techniques in the field. And I think whatever language we're looking at, whether it's science, society, or political challenges, it's how to interpret this book. And if we do this paper, and if we don't understand it, research it, find it, but most relevantly, ask the correct questions. Now, when I was a, when I was a high school student, I was a PTO um, uh, activist, if you want to call us activists. And I looked forward thinking, and I was always told, Take care of the next generation. Take care of the kids because they're going to be the ones that are going to carry and perpetuate and make this thing happen. Well, here we are today. I'm that kinky that they were talking about. <laughs> and I've done and I've sacrificed many years and I've kept quiet for many, many more years. But expecting to be a part of something like this, something bigger than myself, that we're going to take and move, our, move ourselves into this, this new paradigm of of identity or self-governance or, or self-perpetuation. Thank you. Thank you.
and that's unacceptable. For us to be seeking sovereignty and not to articulate it to our next generation, totally unacceptable. And we need to give our people tools to talk to each other, to talk to one another in a manner that we can be diplomatic, if you want to be like that. If you want to say Papua Aloha, um, you can say that. But we need to be able to come to the table, whether we like each other or not, whether we're family or not, and we're all family. Um, and I was only put onto the Hawaii Island ballot this Monday because of a lack of communication between Na'i Puni and Election America, who does not respond to emails or phone calls. Just, I'm being transparent about that. And so if I can't, if I give them my Hilo address and they still put me on the Oahu list, that is the tip of the iceberg of the devil that we're really dealing with. And we just need to be aware and cognizant and support each other. If we're going to boycott, if we're going to vote, you know, all we can do is talk to each other, but our actions speak louder than our words. So, mahalo for your four minutes. Personally, 
is taking advantage of another opportunity that I think is before me and using skills that I have. In addition to um, the work that I've done in Hawaiian language, I also um, and I'm a graduate of William S. Richardson um, School of Law, a licensed attorney in the state. I have not practiced, but I have a foundation of that. Mahalo ya oya for referencing that. You know, we have things that ground us in who we are and what majority of people will call Hawaiian. And then we have another subset, I think, that a lot of people will call non-Hawaiian. We can talk about that day and night, too, because I think our Hawaii did all of that and all of the above. We're very academic and very grounded. And so I see this opportunity in Puni. I don't profess to know all the answers, nor to have a particular um, structure or form of government that I think is going to be better one over the other, but I do know that the one thing I could not go ole when asked by a bunch of people whether or not I would engage in this process. I don't know that I have the ability to ho ole because I've been given so much. I've been given opportunities and ike and kako'o from ohana and extended ohana to be able to engage in this process and truly look for something that I think so many people have already said that will set us up for a better lahui in the 21st century and ahead. There's so many, one, th one thing that I have um, been afforded the opportunity, I don't have my own keiki, but in doing the work that we do with TV, we've been able to bring in keiki who have been raised, whether in the Papahana Kayapuni, but just from a very well-grounded Hawaiian perspective. And it is clear to me that there is a budding generation that are super illeo. You're going to have to be so much better than I am. So what can I do in this context right now to set them up? I think someone referenced that you were the keiki at the time when those kupuna were saying that the next generation would do this. What can I do right now before we get there 20 years from now? And eyakako makia hala hokahi, or let alone a ikamia hokahi, or yaya alivo we hana ike kahimia. No, they don't. Hello, Kako. Hello. Uh, the first thing I wanted to say is I have a website, because if I don't say it now, I'm going to forget. It's puoishibashi.com. Puoishibashi.com. Couldn't afford to have someone to build it, so I built it myself. Uh, who am I? My father's mother is Keloa from Waipio Valley. It still amazes me how people can be born in Waipio, raise, marry somebody, find somebody, marry that person who was also born and raised in Waipio, and that goes on for generations. It's amazing to me. My mom's mom is Martinson from Kau, 20 generations up. I believe I'm 10 generations from Kalanimoku. Uh, married, my much, much, much better half is Gloria Ishibashi, uh, Duvashel from Kauai. Uh, six children, five girls, one boy. My youngest boy is 14 years old. I'm a product of the uh, DOE, Hilo High School, wanted to go to camp, mom said no, she loved me too much. Um, Hilo High School, Hilo Intermediate, Hilo High School, uh, UH Hilo, uh, Community College first, uh, Associate's Degree in Electricity, got my liberal studies degree with uh, minors in Business and Economics, then decided to uh, get my law degree at Gonzaga, or Gonzaga, out in Washington. Um, I think I learned a lot about my culture from my, my, the Wahine in my family, my mom and my grandma's uh, 20 plus years in the world of Kamehameha, uh, currently working for OHA as a land manager uh, on the Divine. Why am I doing this? I don't believe the Nayakuni process is good or appropriate. Uh, when all is said and done, I think it's better to carry on the fight in the canoe than being on the shore or being in the water. Uh, I will advocate for and accept nothing less than uh, independence and sovereignty of the Hawaiian nation and country. 
I know some of my uh, colleagues have been talking about open-minded. I am open-minded, but I believe I have a very strong sense of justice and being formal. And if we know the story, we cannot accept anything less than, than uh, independence and sovereignty, in my mind. Uh, mahalo for the, the hui for inviting us. I appreciate my can the fellow candidates. I, I'm impressed with the people that we have here. Uh, and I also want to thank them because I do have a uh, family reunion that I need to rush off to, so they're allowing me to speak first after I'll introduce myself. So, 